Hello and welcome to Fresh Perspectives. My name is Gail and today we have Kara Seekings on as my guest. Good morning, Gail. <laughs> Good morning, Kara. Thanks for coming on. Um, and uh, do you want to tell the viewing audience a little um, something about yourself for people who might be watching you for the first time? Oh, for heaven's sake, I'd love to. <laughs> Gail knows you have to pay me to shut me up. <laughs> uh, I currently uh, teach nursing at uh, Four Boces. I've been around probably two years longer than dirt. I have always had a great deal of curiosity and believed that Every job is interesting and worth doing well. So with that philosophy, Gail, I tended to have changed jobs a lot. Mm -hmm. You may have known me from the Resource mm -hmm. Center. Yep. I worked with both you and your husband, I think. It, didn't you work at the Resource oh, Center? Oh, yeah, both yeah. of us. I thought yeah. so. Yeah, both of us did. Uh, yeah. You might have known me from the hospitals. I am a nurse. Mm -hmm. You might have known me from Chautauqua, or Chautauqua Opportunities. I ran mm -hmm. a home care agency there. Mm -hmm. I taught for JCC for 17 years in psychology. Oh my. Uh, I also have done uh, end of, uh, much end of life work in nursing and worked with hospice for a number of years. A few years ago I decided to retire. Bad mistake, I hope I rolled my eyes out loud for that. <laughs> Bad mistake. Um, I retired for exactly three years and then went back to I now went back to teaching and love every minute of it. But the other thing I am is I am a person who believes that we are responsible for the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I hear the song, No Man is an Island, it mm -hmm. brings tears to my eyes. Mm -hmm. I believe that as we are, so we get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I'm my normal, mean, rotten, and nasty self, someone is going to bite me in the leg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And deservedly so. Mm -hmm. But in all of that, if I give love, I get love. And, and I've said to you before, I believe we do things for two reasons. Mm -hmm. Love or fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So fear does not rule my life. COVID was a terrible thing to have oh happened gosh. to all of us. And I asked Miss Gale to bring her mask and I brought mine and we <laughs> wore them in. Minus I, nurses. Minus tie-dyed. <laughs> okay, now this is for a purpose because we are doing a promo, Gale and I, about get your vaccine. Mm -hmm. There is no reason that you should be an unvaccinated person. Mm -hmm. Those of you who believe you will get it from the vaccine, as a nurse, I swear to you, mm -mm. it is not a live virus right, vaccine. Right, right, right. You are not going to get anything. And those of you who are debating your loved ones being vaccinated, particularly your children over the age of 12, my only, my only question to you would be, are you willing to bet your child's life? Oh, oh yeah. And if mm -hmm. you are, all right, I'll shut up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But most of us aren't, so please. County Executive, PJ Wendell, <laughs> the Department of Health, all of Chautauqua County, mm -hmm. and Gail and I mm -hmm. ask you, to get mm -hmm. vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Be able to show your Excelsior Pass on your phone. Now, enough commercial. Let's talk about resilience, Gail. Right, right. That's the topic that we decided to do today is resilience. And resilience is something that most of us had to experience throughout 2020 and the early part of 2021 because of the coronavirus pandemic. It's something we learned, had to learn how to do. Um, you know, Kara, when um, I first found out that we were gonna have to wear masks in public for a long, long, long time, I was tempted to start dressing um, like a Middle Eastern 
woman, the ones oh, that have to have to have themselves all covered up and everything, you know. Did, never got around to it. I was too lazy to actually <laughs> go take it that far, but um, but I was tempted, I have to say. Well, and I, I would tell you that when I first heard the mask mandate, of course, I, this year, Gail, mm -hmm. this year, actually, this month this year, mm -hmm. I have been a registered nurse for 50 years. Mm, wow, that's a long time. Since and you were uh, 20 or something like that? My early 20s, yes, yeah. 22. Yeah. Um, so that said, uh, many times I've had to wear masks. Oh, oh, of course, yeah. And so I really didn't, the only thing I refused, mm -hmm. and I will not do, I practically have to break my arm mm -hmm. to get me to wear one of those blue paper jobs Oh, ish. I hate oh, those, and they ish. make my mouth taste funny. I, yeah. I can't explain it, and that's silly, but they leave a papery. Yeah, I, I, imagine, I imagine they probably do. I, um, Which is my reason, of course, I, for these. Um, I actually have only had cloth ones. So, but you know, um, I never came down with anything all winter, not a cold or anything. Me either. Now, I had, I will say, I had COVID mm -hmm. a year ago, uh -huh. prior to the 20, early in 2020. Oh, oh. So, but I also did not have a cold. Mm -hmm. I also got my flu vaccine, of course, mm -hmm. and did not have the flu. Mm -hmm. I didn't catch anybody's anything all winter mm -hmm. long either. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's attributable to masks. I really Probably, do. Probably, uh, because uh, I heard something on the radio one day recently, uh, on National Public Radio, uh, where they were saying that doctors had reported seeing a lot, a, a lot less colds and flu and things like that. Upper this respiratory. Winter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, the only thing I would remind the public, please, if you are a cloth mask wearer. My rule is this. Wash it When up. I go home today, I will drop this one in the laundry basket mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and start a different mm -hmm. one. Um, mm -hmm. If you keep wearing it and it can stand up alone, probably it's time to go to launder it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but again, back to resilience. Right, right. Uh, Gail made an interesting mark, she, remark when she said, We've, we've used it and, and except some of us had to actually develop it. We really had to develop mm -hmm. some bounce to our ounce mm -hmm. and be resilient. But I always like to know we're all talking about the same thing, okay? So mm -hmm. I brought a definition of resilience. Oh, good, us. good. It is the process of adapting well, underline that well, to adversity, tragedy, trauma, or significant sources of stress. Mm -hmm. Whew, boy, is that the truth. Oh, and yeah. we really, during the COVID pandemic, haven't had a choice but to bounce back. It, it has, I've been impressed with us as a country, believe mm -hmm. it or not, mm -hmm. with, with us individuals, with our ability to one foot in front of the other no matter. Mm -hmm. We have shown great strength among adversity. We have. Most of us, although we've been shut in with those people we very much love, make it to the <laughs> end of our proverbial rope and be swinging by the last knot. But we have not only survived, we have been resilient. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I brought a little thing to share. Actually, I'm sharing a PowerPoint that anybody could get. It's online. Oh, okay. It's called Walk in Resilience. Hmm. I'm going to leave the, my copy here with Gail, but it's called Walk in Resilience. And it's online, Google it, or whatever search engine you use. And it's just such a nice PowerPoint. It's really geared. I like to say it's a family PowerPoint. It's one you could share easily with your kids, your grandkids, you know. Um, this talks about those things 
that help us be resilient. What do you think about number one on it? Goal setting with realistic expectations. Yeah. Um, I have been doing something on that order uh, lately. You know, I, I do journaling, you know, and um, I'll write down how I want things to turn out. Uh, but I've gotten more and more to where it's more like small steps and then I can set another goal if I went, not if, when I attain that one goal. Well, and the other good thing about the small steps part is, you know, we, we, don't, we don't eat a loaf of bread mm -hmm. by jamming the loaf in our mouth. No. We slice it, we do whatever we do with it, and we eat it one bite at a time. Right. That's the point of small steps. Mm -hmm. in, in the world of psychology, it's called a ladder of success of approximation. Oh, okay. You design for yourself however you want. Mm -hmm. This step has to happen before I can make this step. Okay. Then this step, it's an action plan. I always mm -hmm. like the fact that we tend, the, the world of, of life coaching and counseling and therapy, always have to have its own buzzwords, don't you know? Yeah. So. Well, you know, I know that you have learned to uh, become a variety of different things. Right. Uh, because you've learned this and this and this and this. Now, I know you could not have possibly studied all of those things. That no, uh, many of them in, have been. At the same time that you had to, uh, you know, learn what you could with the time you had available and once you had attained that then you must have gone on absolutely we cannot we the surest way to fail number of course number one is to fail to plan but number two is to set your goal so you can't possibly meet it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's no point in that you've you've cut your knees off to start with so um i always say to people Make those first couple of steps absolutely immediately achievable. And then add a little more each time and then make it a little more difficult. And then, but the nice, when Gail mentioned journaling, that is such a positive way. It, it does a couple of things. One thing it does is let us put our thoughts in, in any manner we choose mm -hmm. in a trusted place. Mm -hmm. But the second thing it does is when we go back and look at the journal, our memories sometimes may, oh, embroil or, you know, just be a little loose. Something that we have blown up into our mind to be life shattering. If you go back and read your journal entry, it brings back what is in fact and what you actually felt at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not blown out of proportion, mm -hmm. and it's not, mm -hmm. and, and the, I, another word on journaling, my favorite thing about it is you can treat yourself to the world's most beautiful journal, or you can use a dime store notebook. Mm -hmm. No, It doesn't matter. No, and you, don't, <laughs> and you can do it on the computer if that's where you wanna do it. Yeah, I found a really nice, uh, last summer I went to the Northern Chautauqua Canine Rescue's uh, yard sale and found a really nice uh, hardcover journal, <laughs> which is the one I'm presently writing in. Um, I, was, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, anything that, I have a friend who journals on, uh, they must be five by eight index cards. Oh, really, the, on index cards? The bigger size that? one, yeah. Wow. And she keeps them in a, in a recipe box, oh. that, a big mm -hmm. one, you know, mm -hmm. an index card box. Uh -huh. um, so that's one really good thing. This next one, learning from our mistakes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's where most yeah. of us gallo <laughs> gather our most valuable education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that I could make that happen, you know, if I did that certain thing. Yeah. And there are sometimes I will have to own the fact, Gail, that I've learned from my mistakes <laughs> because I have said, okay, this might happen, but I'll push it and pray it doesn't. <laughs> 
of course, exactly what I assumed was going to happen <laughs> happens. But so it isn't, you know, we get into all of us sometimes. It's all that darn Gail's fault. She did it. <laughs> okay. But blaming someone else does not change our behavior. It also doesn't teach us anything. You know? <laughs> so we want to take those mistakes. Make all you got to make, okay? Mm -hmm. Do it. Mm -hmm. My grandma would have told you we all walk Pools Hill in our own way and you can't stop anybody. You know, another thing that we have to think about, too, um, and this is something uh, that I've noticed a lot uh, in my adult life is uh, everybody doesn't think alike. Heaven I mean, forbid. You know, and sometimes I am just dumbfounded at how different uh, some people are than I am, and even ones that are related to me. <laughs> or ones who are related to me by love, uh -huh. um, like family of, of choice people, uh -huh. friends. Uh -huh. And the other thing, I, I have to check myself now. I, boy, this is a vulnerable moment for me. And mm -hmm. we all know Kara Seekings doesn't like vulnerable really well. <laughs> okay, um, but when someone's opinion differs from mine, I have to check my own head to make sure what's running through it is not how stupid are you. Oh, uh, towards the other person. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, or how uneducated are you about this? Or what would make you make such a remark? I, I guard myself very carefully because I don't want to judge someone else's opinion. Mm -hmm. It's yours, you're entitled to mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, a lot of the times <laughs> when somebody says uh, something to me that I find shocking, because it amazes me that anybody would think that, <laughs> I, I usually, just, I, I've gotten to where I just keep my mouth shut because I know if I say what I'm feeling, we're going to get in a big fight. <laughs> you always know when I'm at a loss, and I'm rarely at a loss, but when I'm at a loss, I will say one of two catchphrases. That's interesting. <laughs> or, that's a unique take on it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm usually just rendered speechless. <laughs> yeah, there are people who wish I were rendered speechless. <laughs> but um, there, you know, really seriously, I, it, it's so difficult. Now, another one, willingness to overcome difficulties rather than avoid the problem. Oh. We all know those ostrich in the sand people. They would much rather dig right out into their shoulders than ever ever confront a problem. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is the problem remains. And you have you have And you're still you, in the same. You haven't fixed it. No. Yeah. Yeah. And I think part of that willingness is a communication piece. Because sometimes from my own mouth I think what is wrong with me. <laughs> You know, Art Linkletter for many years had a show. Kids say the darndest thing. Most oh, people yeah. don't even know who Art Linkletter is anymore. Yeah, but anyway, probably not. <laughs> he had a, a show we're, saying... We're old enough that yes. we know who he was. Yeah. Kids say the darndest <laughs> things. You know, sometimes, though, we don't watch how we communicate with others. We, you know, and I, I'm a hip shooter. Every now and then, whatever comes out of my mouth must have been fired from a cannon because it doesn't belong to me. Mm -hmm. But it does. Mm -hmm. We need to communicate and we need to not attack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the old assertion training, I feel, therefore, because, instead of, you make me so mad, <laughs> you know, I feel angry when you call me names. Make it my onus. Don't make it yours. If I expect you to be cooperative, I better not attack you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we never solve anything through attack. Mm -hmm. We've seen that through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. recent newscasts. Yeah, nobody really wins an argument, do they? No, never, <laughs> never. And usually, both the winner and the loser don't feel good after no, the after the interaction. It's no. 
the ability to recognize our own emotions that is so big in resilience we have to know what we feel and not only do we have to know it we have to accept it every now and then as much as i hate to think i am capable of dislike something it's not something yes but someone everybody has something redeeming about them but every now and then i have to own the fact i actively dislike someone and it doesn't i don't have to i don't have to go into the reasons what i do is simply don't have social occasions with that person and right right that works well for everybody concerned yeah usually that's what people do is they hang around with the people that they like and and they find common ground right. with and and that kind of thing now one of the key things i think is to know the types of resilience okay mm -hmm. we have as people definitely shown the first three Mm -hmm. We are beginning to show the mm -hmm. fourth one. First one is physical. Maintaining our stamina and strength. Right, right. How many programs did we see come out on Zoom that were exercise programs you could do from home? Right. Most of us could use a little more movement in our lives, um, whether it be simple chair exercises mm -hmm. or, or walking. Mm -hmm. Fine. So physically get caught up on all of those appointments you have missed. Mm -hmm. They are so vital. Mm -hmm. Other physical things. You know, um, I know for a fact that there are fresh fruits and vegetables available in Chautauqua County. Oh, yeah. You know, get it, get, eat well, right. sleep well, physically. My students recently did a health fair uh -huh. And it was called Seniors Just for the Health of It. Just for the Health of It. Right. But the topics they covered were things like exercise, nutrition, stress release. All, every one of us need, whether we're a senior, whether we're a child. We all need those physical pieces. Right. Emotional, resil uh, mm -hmm. emotional resilience those things that cause us to trigger. Some of us, I mean, when people raise their voices, I automatically have a negative reaction. Mm -hmm. I cannot, I cannot do being yelled at. You can say anything, but speak to me in a normal tone. Um, but I know that. So I try to avoid triggering those kind of things. Mm -hmm. If I know that I, if I see a, very large carrot cake in the middle of the table, mm -hmm. I'm going to have an emotional reaction. I'm going to be hungry, even though I'm not hungry. It is going to be emotional only. So pay attention to those things emotionally. Right. Psychologically, same thing. Get the skills and tools to adapt. Well, here's something I want to mention um, about the physical part of it. Um, now, there are a lot of people who just want to live the life they want to live. They want to eat what they want to eat, whether it's bad for them or not. They may not want, may not exercise because they really just don't want to. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, if they tried it, they might find that you they liked like the it. way they felt, <laughs> you know, when they did it. But um, the thing that I have noticed over the course of my adult life is in the long run, if you're not taking good care of yourself, you're leading up to um, some serious health issues in yourself that's going to wind up affecting your entire family. Yes. And probably your friends, too. And your resilience. And your resilience. If you are not, I really believe to, to continue on resiliently as we have. We have to feel our best. Because boy, this takes energy. It does, it I mean, really does. People tell me about, how, how can I be sitting at home, Kara, and be so tired? Because you're sitting at home. <laughs> Your energy levels are being depleted. Yeah, there's something about too much rest is as bad as not enough. Well, and I think we, 
we confuse. I heard a, I heard a, a thing yesterday about circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. We need to maintain our circadian rhythm, mm -hmm. whatever ours is. Now, I'm somebody who knows she cannot do it on five hours sleep. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely, me either. Yeah. Uh, me, you know, not, not happening. I really am a seven to eight hour person. And if I get less than that, I'm going to have a lot of brain fog happening. So, yeah, one time somebody gave my husband and I one of those big bars of dark chocolate <laughs> that, like, was 90% cacao. Wow. <laughs> At lunchtime one day, we each ate like two of the little tiny squares <laughs> of that. Just uh, this, not in the evening. This was a lunchtime, so it was fairly early in the day. I did not get a bit of sleep that night. I told my husband, "Well, you'll probably have to eat the rest of that chocolate bar by yourself because I'm not going to go through that again." Well, and <laughs> think about physically most of our caffeine intake. Oh, yeah. We yeah. don't, you know, I, I would absolutely deny that diet dark, mm -hmm. as I refer to it, has any caffeine in it. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it's just as high in caffeine as on diet dark. Mm -hmm. um, coffee, tea, most mm -hmm. teas are caffeinated well, that's unless why, you're drinking herbals. That's why, apparently, apparently, that's why I did not sleep that night, because the higher oh, the cacao yeah. content in the chocolate, the more caffeine there is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and I am, I am such a caffeine sensitive person, so. Well, and again, you know, you make a trade off there. If you really want to have it, Gail, you're going to have to have it at 8 a.m. <laughs> right, right. At you're going to have the breakfast have, chocolate. Have, have the chocolate at breakfast, right. yeah. There is uh, the fourth type of resilience, and we're beginning to see more of this. It's called community resilience. Community resilience. Yep. It's how we re-knit. Re -knit ourselves. Ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, Gail and I were talking earlier about doing another show this early summer. Uh, and we're going to do one on acts of kindness and random acts of kindness. Mm -hmm. That's part of community resilience. Mm -hmm. It's the gift that does not ask for, for recognition. Oh, oh. It's the gift that helps your neighbor get through. Oh, yeah. It's the $5 that although you'd rather spend it on whatever, you're going to send it to a charity mm -hmm. because you appreciate their work. Mm -hmm. Those are pieces of community resilience. It's reminding yourself to thank the cashier in the grocery store. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anything we can do to give a momentary smile, a little piece of strength, a hands up, help build our community resilience. We finally have hit a point on the local level mm -hmm where we are seeing leadership that has a better understanding of community resilience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For that, I'm extremely grateful. Mm -hmm. um, I wish we could see it on even a bigger level. Mm -hmm. But if we don't support each other through the disaster, and it is a disaster, yeah. COVID cannot be possibly, this pandemic, cannot possibly be referred to anything other than a physical health disaster. Mm -hmm. Another word I like um, to use to describe that kind of a situation is challenging. Yipper. Um, I mean, and it has been a challenge. No matter what kind of spin you try to put mm -hmm. on this disaster, mm -hmm. There is not a positive. It has been a challenge. It, many people, you know, everybody has an opinion about how we should recover. I also have one. We should recover mm -hmm. the very best way that we can, still loving and caring for each other and in support of our country. I, this is not about politics for me. This is about people. 
I look at my neighbors, uh, people here in, in Mayville, I look at friends, I think, what do I really want for them? I want their highest and best. I am not lessened by their oh, being fine, fabulous, or okay. I am not changed by that. Mm -hmm. And I certainly am not diminished by it. So community resilience, help your neighbor get through. Support your police departments. Support your fire departments. Your life may depend upon them. You know, I, I think we get caught up in the eyes and we forget about the we's. This is a time where we need to take a look at some groups who understand for the greater good. Yeah. We want to be what's known as lucky, but we should want that for everybody. Because lucky isn't enough. If I'm lucky and you're not, then we're not lucky. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I have had a very difficult time through all of this pandemic understanding the gathering in peace. Now, not the gathering in people, the gathering in of things, toilet paper. Oh. I, those things, I mean, so does that mean that if I knock on your door because I have none, that you will turn me away? Now, that's rhetorical for everybody. <laughs> uh, I don't yeah. want to know, Gail, yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, it, realistically, in your neighborhood, uh, it isn't about the toilet paper or about the carrots or about anything. It's, well, they must, you give? people must have been really scared to be hoarding stuff like the way they Absolutely. were. Absolutely. The fear level through that. Yeah. As we begin to diminish the fear, mm -hmm. We need to look as a society at being better and kinder. You know, I, I, I very kiddingly said this, but I, after I thought about it, someone said to me, what do you think caused this pandemic? And of course, nurse that I am, I know exactly what caused this <laughs> yeah. pandemic. Of and course. I'm not blaming any country or person or anything <laughs> else. The <laughs> pandemic happened because of coronavirus, okay? Mm -hmm. But the other thing that occurred to me is not what caused the pandemic, but how will we survive the pandemic? And not just physically, how will we as a society survive? We have been decimated as a society. If I remember the statistic correctly, I don't remember it correctly, but there have been so many deaths and so many illnesses and so many people unemployed and so much and so this and so that only by locked elbows i i kid about this the elbow twitch. oh the the elbow bump yeah right yeah. now we elbow bump well now while you're bumping remember to use a little of that energy to help your friend mm -hmm. stay strong mm -hmm. bump in caring diminish fear bring fear down we tend as a society to look at fear and say, what is the, what, excuse me. <laughs> I think I just- Oh, you lo thing. did you lose your I, microphone? Well, <laughs> well, I have my microphone, I lost my cord. I'll just speak Oh, loudly. no, no, no the, I lost my microphone. No, no, the <laughs> microphone okay. must have uh, fallen on the floor or something. <laughs> Hey, Gail and I are resilient. We're going to solve this. There we go. Here comes Justin to help you. <laughs> Look how I'm throwing cleaners. Right? <laughs> Justin, my microphone really is gone. I hate it or something. Yeah, awesome. every once in a while it comes. They pop, yeah, they pop out of the clip. <laughs> I got to express it. <laughs> I'll try to behave myself. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, Momentary okay. problem. Okay, okay, we're back. Um. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we can look at fear 
throw up our <laughs> arms and I won't do it again. Yeah, don't throw up your arms anymore. and run in circles. <laughs> and you know what? That fear just got bigger. Mm -hmm. Or we can look at fear and say, I am afraid. And decide what we're afraid about. Don't go to the worst case scenario. Life is not exploding in your face. I am not Henny Penny. The sky is not falling. Bring yourself to reality. I love the term reality check because most of us need it most of the time. Resilience is built by you being able to get your mind wrapped around your part of it. I think people are afraid to reach out. I don't want to seem nosy. I don't want to, you know, but if a neighbor needs, you're not nosy. Yeah, it, it all depends. Um, you know, um, I don't like, I don't generally like, um, you know, to, if, unless I see somebody's obviously in distress, I don't usually like to ask people uh, questions about themselves that are too terribly, uh, private or anything. Um, and sometimes if, um, but anyway, sometimes obviously somebody is in distress. And, I, and, and I often will use the line, is there anything I can do to help? Yeah. Well, you know, my husband, <laughs> my husband is very tall. He's six foot eight. We were in Walmart one day a few months <laughs> back and all of a sudden this woman, uh, came over to my husband, there was something that she and her husband wanted to buy and it was up on a high shelf and she wondered if he'd come over and just uh, get it down for them and he was able to reach it without any trouble at all and they, they looked so happy just because they found, just because synchronistically just as soon as they needed something they needed to buy something that they couldn't reach. Somebody who was very tall just happened to walk past, <laughs> and, I, and and he was and he's one of these people that's always willing to do that for somebody, you know. If I'm they sure, having grown to. up his life as a tall man, he's had plenty of <laughs> plenty of chances. Well, you know, lots of. It seems like you can't go, we can't go anywhere without somebody asking him how tall, just asking him out of curiosity mm -hmm, how tall mm -hmm. he is. It's like, how tall are you? <laughs> I love it. But, you know, but now, isn't that funny? Because one of the other things in here is be willing to step out of your comfort zone. Now, one of the parts as someone who uses a wheelchair in public, often, me. Oh, do you? Oh, yes. Oh, I didn't yeah, know yeah. that. Oh, yes. I use, mm -hmm. um, I use an electric wheelchair. Oh, okay. Um, so as someone who does that, I can never reach anything above here, of course. Mm -hmm. And so um, it does take stepping out of your comfort zone to approach someone mm -hmm. who you don't know in a store. Mm -hmm and ask, would you help me? Mm -hmm. I have never had anybody refuse me either. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. <coughs> it's, that's resilience. That's the ability to say, mm -hmm. thanks, I needed that help. Well, you know, <coughs> I, you just made me think of something. Um, I remember, and this was quite a number of years ago, it was when there was, um, what was the name of that store? I don't even, maybe it was Ames or something like that, that, that was in Mayville. It's where that one hotel is now. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't. Was it Hill, Hills No, it or wasn't. Ames? It wasn't Hills. I think it was, it I think Ames. it might have been yeah. Ames. And I remember uh, being in there for some reason one day, and it was when I was maybe only in my 30s. And there were a couple of elderly ladies that needed to buy some Depends for themselves. And wouldn't you know it, they were on a <laughs> fairly high shelf where these ladies couldn't reach. And I realized that I was taller than those two ladies. And I realized that I, 
I'm pretty good at stretching up, uh, you know, getting up on my toes and stretching real good. Uh, and so it's the I, yoga, Gail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, so I told them. I said, if you need something, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't somebody who was working there, but I said, if if you need something from that shelf, I'll get it down for you. You know, when you do something like that for somebody. It makes them feel really happy that somebody did that, you know. And to you, and it's and a it feels, small gesture. And, and it feels good to you when you realize that you've just done, and it's just a small thing, but it makes you feel good that you uh, did something that uh, meant something t to somebody. It doesn't. You don't have to do something really big. No, it can to, be to to uh, for people to feel really grateful. I mean, it can be any little thing. It's whatever they need at the moment. Yep. And I think another thing, you have to be willing to try new experiences. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. <coughs> we often forget that things are all a matter of perspective, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So sometimes if you can try a different perspective, you can look at it from a different angle, mm -hmm. you can, writing it down for me is very helpful. Oh yeah. Because yeah. it makes me then see what are my words mm -hmm. and what are really the situation. Mm -hmm. um, so, but then trying to see it from another's point of view or trying to see it in a different situation. Um, first of all, increases our self-awareness, but also it then allows us the opportunity to expand our ability to react. You know, like I have like two angry reactions, okay? I mean, either I blow up and shoot off my mouth or I blow up and shoot off my mouth or whatever, you mm -hmm. know? But it has helped me assess what am I really angry at before I blow up and shoot off my mouth? It, it's that moment of internalization where I say to myself, instead of reacting out here, let me look at me and say, what am I really mad about? I have to view it from a different perspective so that I can decide. And that's a good thing. I, we can't get through the pandemic. We would not, we will not successfully get through the pandemic if we waste all our energy on anger, on fear, on, on kindness. Our resilience will not be enough to sustain us. I think of resilience as a reserve. I have built it up by learning and experiencing new things. I built it up some through knowledge, but mostly through action, reaction, making big fat mistakes, um, learning, growing, that reserve of resilience, I keep putting into it all the time. Every kind gesture, every little thing helps me be just a little bit more able to bounce back. When I say a kind word to someone, I think of it as follow the bouncing ball because you automatically see that other person react to your kindness. Right, right. I mean, even if you'd only see this much of their face, their eyes light up. Yeah, well, you know, um, I do believe it's possible uh, to uh, turn somebody, <coughs> if you perceive that somebody doesn't like you, but you, continuously, if it's somebody you have to be around a lot because maybe you work with them or something, and you perceive that maybe they, for some reason or the other, they don't like you, and then, but you continue to be nice to them, consistently nice to them all the time, they start to like you. Well, there's a second piece of that. Oh, is there? 
you're absolutely right. Okay, but have you ever noticed that? <coughs> <coughs> have you ever noticed that it's the people we believe don't like us mm -hmm. that if we really look at our own feelings, mm -hmm. we're not real sure about them. You think so? Mm -hmm. I, I, I try. I, I agree with you. I believe that killing them with kindness is the best way to float it. I really do because then I'm sure I'm not giving off I don't like you vibes to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not ingenuine. I don't mean it that way or disgenuine. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. But I, I will go out of my way to be careful with how I word things, to, um, be, to be equally as kind to them as I would be, you know, uh, it's my practice to say good morning to people when mm -hmm. I come into work. Mm -hmm. I would never, whether you're speaking to, and sometimes I have students who are not speaking to me, oh. depending upon the test or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, but it changes nothing for me. Mm -hmm. Speaking to me or not, mm -hmm. I wish you a good morning. I think that when we perceive someone doesn't like us, as I say, first I look at my feelings because I'm wondering if I'm feeling a little icky about them. But secondly, by presenting the same me to them as I present to everybody else, I think you're right. People tend to maybe warm up a little as they see we're really not breathing fire. Mm -hmm. Or um, I, yeah. I just think it's a, a more cordial kind of thing for if you have to work with someone, you have to work with them. Right, right. You know, and if you, I, I honestly, I tell young people all the time, if you think you're going to work and you're going to love everybody, get over yourself. <laughs> uh, you're going to go to work and you're going to work with some wonderful people and you're going to work with some people who are very average in their work mm -hmm. and you're going to work with some people who make you nuts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're going to treat all of them Mm -hmm. like decent human beings. That's that. Um, if we gave everybody the same courtesy we gave a stranger, we would be a lot more resilient society because we would care. Resilience is caring. I absolutely, you know, I don't allow my students, for example, to, to use I can't. They are not allowed to say I can't. Mm -hmm. I can't translate to I won't. Now, if I'm not able to do something because of another commitment, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But I can't really, in my case, probably means I don't want to. Mm -hmm. So I try to tell the truth. I try to say, I appreciate the offer. Well, sometimes you have limitations Heaven forbid that, huh? <laughs> uh, that make it impossible for you to do certain things like a certain handicap or something. Sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> but that's not what you're talking no, about. No, I'm talking about <laughs> I can't possibly do that paper, Ms. Kara, because I can't find Google or some other, <laughs> you know. No, that means I won't do it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's another thing. I have to tell you, I have been so impressed, Gail. And it takes a lot to impress this old battle axe, believe me. But I have been so impressed by the caliber of resilience mm -hmm. and strength our children have shown. In this last year and a half, they have been through probably one of the most difficult periods of non-education education that the world has ever known. And they have really come through it amazingly well. I mean, I know there's a lot of, uh, again, opinions on what should and should be happening, but basically our children are still playing and we all agree that work is the play of childhood. They're getting health care. Many of them have parenting attention they have never known. Uh, those who are in daycare are good at getting quality daycare. Have you noticed, and maybe perhaps not, I only know because of having great grandkids, the quality of daycare has improved 
so greatly. I mean, these little people are getting educations, you know, and they're doing it with the work of childhood. So daycare is building resilience. They are going to be, although I would hope, of course, they would never in their lifetime endure another pandemic. They are going to be so much more resilient than we are if we can just hold out till they grow up. <laughs> well, you know, uh, another thing about resilience is the people um, like working in all the grocery stores, all of the stores oh, that were open wow. that showed up for work every day. That's resilience. And in, in the skilled nursing facilities, mm -hmm. the staff there, I don't know how they have done it. I really don't. I don't know that I could have done it, even in all my years of nursing. I don't know. They have shown such resilience and such caring kindness. You know, they've been so, and, and I'm not speaking about a particular skilled nursing facility. I have seen it from all of them really trying to help their, their residents stay connected with families, trying to bring in some things of interest in a safe manner. You know, I have a friend who, who is in a skilled facility who I've not been able to visit for what, since a year ago last March. Oh, yeah. And um, we talk routinely. Uh, the facility is wonderful at keeping me up to date. When I can, I will visit her. But those staff, wow, they have, you know, speaking of people who don't make a gazillion dollars, mm -hmm. same thing with clerks in the stores. Mm -hmm. These are not folks who come to work because their weekly paycheck is $1,000. It isn't. They come to work because they are dedicated mm -hmm. and because they care. Mm -hmm. And because they're resilient, mm -hmm. you know, that's, I just think that we have come so far, but we have far to go yet. At some point we are going to have, and this is an old AA thing, we are going to have to get off personalities and get on principles. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are going to have to decide what ours really are. Uh, in a conversation recently in, in an ethics class, I was, they were saying, well, you know, it would be so much simpler, Ms. Kara, if he would just put up a list of these are the ethics. <clears throat> well, number one, of course, for those people who are, who are Christian, mm -hmm. I think probably God did put up a set of ethics when mm -hmm. he crafted or she crafted the Ten Commandments. Oh, <laughs> but, yeah, um, yeah. You know, yeah. I think that it doesn't matter who puts up a set of ethics. We adopt our own, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And hopefully we do it with kindness and love and, and good things. But this person wanted to know, you know, why? Why can't we just enact a set? I said, are you kidding? We can't get people to voluntarily be ethical. <laughs> <laughs> and now you want to make it legally binding? You know? <laughs> Please. Uh, but I th again, I think that's the case. It's, if there was a magic prescribed way to set up ethical behavior or resilient behavior or kindness, it would be a wonderful thing, but that's not going to happen because it begins with the Gales and the Karas and the... Mm -hmm. And the people in the audience today, it begins with them mm -hmm. taking mm -hmm. the step to say, I am a resilient person. I made it through this. Mm -hmm. wonder what I can do. Well, you know, I, I, I get the feeling that a lot of the people that watch Fresh Perspectives are very nice people because a lot of them have introduced themselves to me over the um, five or maybe... Um, well, I'm not, I think five or six years I've been doing this, and I've had so many people come up to me and talk to me. And, um, you know, I, I, they, seem, they all seem like really nice people. Well, all, and I'm all. sure you have nice viewers because <laughs> they've approached me and said, I saw you on Gail's show. <laughs> and I, fortunately, I, fresh perspectives always comes right to my mind. Uh -huh. but. It's like they don't say the show name because they're not sure I'll rem 
remember, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but G on Gail's show. So uh -huh. that's great. You know, that's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, yeah. and I, they always are pleasant. Yeah, I've, I've, I've made some new friends um, as a result of being on Fresh Perspectives because people come up and would come up and introduce themselves to me, people who probably never would have introduced themselves. And that's a fun to thing. To me, you it know, uh, otherwise. Well, and I think it follows along more with the line that I'm a firm believer we are threads in the same tapestry, mm -hmm. Gail. Um, mm -hmm. And if your thread weren't there, I would have a terrible loss. So I think when we, if we could only continue to see all of us in threads of the Gale and Kara tapestry, mm -hmm. or whatever name you want to put on it, mm -hmm. we are not independent. We are intra-dependent, one uh, on the other. Well, you know, in the Hindu scriptures, um, Lord Krishna referred to everybody else as being beads on a string uh, that were attached to him. You know, like uh, we're all connected. There is not, a, Gail and I are currently at this very moment separated by a round table with the blue cover and some cups and my papers all over it, but there is no separation. We are, we are two individuals, certainly, and unique sometimes, mm -hmm. both of us, but, but, but there is not separation. And we have a lot in common, I do believe. Yeah. And I think if we look out in the world, Gail, when I look at people not as different, at, as, as what's different than me, mm -hmm. when I look in the, at them as what I have in common with them, boy, am I common. <laughs> Let me just tell you the truth. I have many more commonalities with people than I have differences, you know, and I believe in celebrating those commonalities. I believe that, okay, you may not be interested in miniature doll houses. I am, but you know what? I know several other people who are. So with them, I might discuss that. I, but we all, I see us as this. Mm -hmm. I see us as this. Mm -hmm. and. Each of, and because I'm such a firm believer in personal responsibility, I am responsible, just as you are, to help build community resilience. Just as everybody watching today is responsible for a piece of their community resilience. If you don't have time and you don't have money, that's okay because you'll find a way to do a nice act. Well, you know, when um, uh, Colleen Vanderseiden was on a couple of episodes back, uh, I was mentioning, we were uh, kind of like mentioning to each other um, how there had been times in our lives when we didn't have any money, <laughs> but for some reason we always had everything we needed anyways, <laughs> you know, somehow uh, we, we managed. We are people, I think, if we want poverty, then we'll, we we'll, live poverty, we, yeah. we invite poverty. Yeah, yeah. If we want abundance, I, I like Colleen, there have been, and like you, there have been times in my life where mm -hmm. not only did I not have the pot or the window, mm -hmm. okay? and. Um, but abundance happened because I believe mm -hmm. that abundance will. Yeah, if you believe that you'll always have everything you I need. I obviously yeah. am, you know, have more than enough to eat. Mm -hmm. I have shelter over my head. I'm allowed to worship freely in my country. I'm allowed friends. Mm -hmm. I have a very much to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. But I believe that I deserve abundance and I'm willing to work for it don't misunderstand that but mm -hmm. I believe I deserve it yeah and I yeah. will have it oh sure <laughs> well I hate to say it but we've come to the end of another oh, episode darn. of French Perspectives and I want to thank you again uh, for coming I have on such today. fun here <laughs> yeah and thank you for volunteering <laughs> with another upcoming episode. You got it. And I'll see those of you in the viewing audience on the next episode. <laughs> <laughs>